Hi guys, welcome to the Occasional Biker. Going to be doing something a little bit different today. As some of you may know, I work in IT and recently we've been installing WDS and MDT into our corporate environment. And we have had a few problems with Pixie Boot along the way. Wasn't much information available online, so I thought I'd do this video detailing what we found, how we fixed it, and hopefully it'll help somebody out in the future. So here we go. So after installing and configuring WDS and MDT, we found that we were getting Pixie Boot timeouts on the clients. It wasn't long before we worked out that it was just clients connecting from separate VLANs that were experiencing the timeouts. I should probably point out here that as per MS instructions, we were using correctly configured DHCP relays and all our SVIs and not using DHCP options 66 and 67 in our scopes. So after doing a lot of research, which didn't really get me anywhere, I eventually worked out that our problems were down to two things. The first being the DHCP snooping configuration on our Cisco access switches, and the second being the base configuration of WDS itself, that being either in integrated A&E mode or standalone mode. Now as you probably know, Pixie Boot initialization is part of the DHCP process, and on screen here we've got a Wireshark capture of a failed Pixie Boot. You can see that the client is requesting Pixie Boot information from the WDS server, and the WDS server is replying with NBP file and location information. However, the process just keeps repeating. So that communication is getting uh, either broken or lost somewhere along the line. If we then compare that with a screenshot of a Wireshark capture of a successful Pixie Boot, we can see that here that the DHCP transaction is actually quite short. Um, in this case, the DHCP acknowledgement packets from the WDS server are obviously getting back to the client and the client is then proceeding to download the NBP file and perform a successful Pixie boot. So once we'd worked out that the DHCP transaction being interrupted was the main cause of our Pixie boot issues, we managed to trace it back to a feature of Cisco switches called DHCP snooping. DHCP snooping is meant to uh, protect a network from rogue DHCP servers and devices. Uh, but in our case, it was obviously disrupting the flow of DHCP packets required for Pixie Boot. We tried several workarounds to try and fix this, including speci specifying the interfaces involved as trusted in the DHCP snooping configuration. However, these didn't work, and we ended up setting up a separate VLAN for the support team to use when they needed to Pixie Boot and install clients and um, disabling the DHCP snooping features on this specific VLAN. In our configuration we also had issues getting Pixie Boot to work correctly with WDS set up in integrated A&D mode, yet it worked perfectly with WDS set up in standalone mode. We didn't do any further testing as this seems to be a long-standing bug with WDS, but it's just something to check and bear in mind if you're having issues. Anyway, hopefully the information I've detailed in this video will help somebody who's having Pixie Boot problems at some point in the future and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot guys.